Hello, my name is Uwe Steinkraus. I am with company Unified Automation. We are doing software development kits for integrating OPC UA technology into existing devices, software and systems. Today I want to talk about the scalability of the OPC UA technology, about the profiles and conformance units. This is part four of a series of five technical presentations. OPC UA is a toolbox of features. And of course, the first question is how to scale this huge feature set on small devices. And then, of course, how to maintain compatibility and conformance when scaling down to a reduced set of functions. And in addition to that, we have quite a lot of security variations that are available in OPC UA. Also the information models and the domain specific extensions, the companion specifications, we need to remain compatibility to make interoperability uh, become reality. And to do so, the OPC Foundation is grouping functionality in logical sets. So sets that logically belong together. And with that, we have full features profiles. We have profiles and facets, which are extensions to full features profiles. And we have conformance units, which is the smallest unit of a functionality that belongs together. And the conformance unit are also tested and certified in the test labs of the OPC Foundation. We also have the ability to expose information about the profiles in the address space of the OPC server. So all the clients that connect to it can discover what feature set is supported by this server. The OPC profiles can be used to scale for embedded systems. So the smallest representation of a feature is a conformance unit and the conformance unit can be certified uh, with a test and multiple conformance unit can be grouped together into a profile and then we have full featured profiles which describe a full feature set of a server. As an example in this picture uh, we have a full featured profile which is a standard UA server and this already contains the address space, it contains security and it contains the data access, so the access to this information, reading, writing, subscribing to data, and it also contains the protocol binding, which in this case is the binary TCP protocol. And on top of this full featured profile, we can have an event subscription facet and a method facet to call methods. And the two together gives us the alarms and conditions. So this would be a server, a standard UA server that has alarms and conditions capabilities. So we can have an event and with the method we can acknowledge this event. So that gives us the ability to do alarms. And in addition to that, the server can be extended with a historical access and with a complex data or redundancy facet describing, okay, this server has more features uh, than the pure standard server. And of course, we also can do that for the information model, uh, the device information model or the PLC open information model or any other kind of companion specification model. And there will be uh, profiles for the pub sub communication as well. Here's a list of those. We have a list of publish subscribe profiles. They are full featured profiles that describe uh, the encoding and the transport. And we have that for the cyclic fixed profile. We have a dynamic profile and a flexible layout profile that is describing how the messages are put together and sent. And then we have profiles for the communication over an MQTT, AMQP, uh, and even with a JSON encoding profile. And in addition to that, we have the facets, and the facet describe 
the information model facet describes for the public subscribe configuration that receives inside the information model of the server. Um, then we have parameter configuration facets uh, and component configuration. So you can configure the pop-sub messages through the information model of the OPC server. To have the full details on all the available profiles and facets, uh, you can look up the OPC Foundation website um, and the sub uh, side of the profile reporting uh, and there's a full list of all the features including the description, what functions are required and what functions are optional in which profile. Any OPC server of course should expose its capabilities uh, so that the receiver can adapt to that. And to do so, there's an object inside uh, the server address space and uh, it's called the server profile array. And in this array, you can find all the profiles that this server supports. And you can see it here from the picture on the right side. There you have the, the tree of the address space um, where you can find it. These are, in addition to the profile uh, URIs, we have a human readable shortcut which gives you a very brief information about the capabilities and uh, those are also discoverable um, and exposed through the discovery service. And for example, DA means it's data access, AC means it's alarms and conditions and HA means it has access to the historical information. Very important for embedded devices is the operational limits. With the operational limits, certain functions can be reduced by the amount of data they are applied to. So the quantity limitation of a server functionality. So for example, you can describe that you can read data, but you can only read 100 data points at a time and not a thousand or a hundred thousand. Reason for that is that a small embedded server does not need so much memory to uh, handle this request. And so the server can limit um, the individual amount of data for individual functions. So we have something like max node per read, max node per browse, or max monitored items per call. And this information is also exposed in the address space of the server. The client can read it out, can adapt to that, and then knows, okay, go easy on this server. It has operational limits. With that, I want to thank you for your attention. This was a presentation about the scalability of OPC UA.